I want to welcome everybody. We've had some technical problems at this camp meeting so far. So I hope um, the digital whiteboard will work, but I'm using having to use the hotspot to do that. So I may, it may not work. There may be some lag. I've got um, some notes for this uh, study. It's taken from Christ Object Lessons. Chapter five. And it begins page 76. The translators should have that information. I've also got a second reference, which is August 2nd, 1892. The sermon that was done by A.T. Jones, and it was published in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald. And I've given the page uh, numbers for everybody. I've given the page numbers for you. So there aren't any notes. To, there aren't notes for the uh, Jones article because I've already shared that in the past. It's an, it's one that I've used or referenced previously. So I just want to make reference back to the A.T. Jones article. This would be the, the, the fourth paragraph, but you don't need to know that. In the first three paragraphs, Jones is going to quote several Bible verses. going to quote from Matthew and Acts. And then in the fourth paragraph, he begins to comment on these verses that he's referenced. So that we understand what the subject is, The title is the gospel. And there are some sub questions. What is it? and how it works. I've paraphrased the title. And he's going to discuss what it is and how it works and when he does that, the second bit of how it works Is going to compare it. Does anybody does anybody know what he's going to compare it to? The, uh, Good. The mystery of iniquity. So obviously all of us should understand this methodology that he's uh, using here, just in the title. He's 
He's going to define what the gospel is for us. And once he's done that, he's going to compare and contrast the gospel to the mystery of iniquity. How many people here in the group have actually read this article? I think I, I brought it to the movement's consciousness several months ago now. Okay, so for people online, I don't know how many people have studied it, but nobody here in our group have, uh, has read through this article. So I'm just going to read, um, having given that introduction, just a few words from the fourth paragraph. All these verses are essential for us to know the full force. The full force of the commission or the work which God has given to his disciples. When he says Lord, he's referring to Jesus at this time, in this context. They were to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They were to go into all the world and they were to preach the gospel to every creature. Teaching all nations. And yet... They were, they were not to go until they were given power from heaven. If you go through the sermon, it's, it's really informative. If you took the time to study it, and break down some of his ideas, it'd be very informative for people, I think. On the surface, it's a very, it's a very conventional sermon. It's really about Jesus and the New Testament gospel. Oh, I've just lost connection. I don't know if it's at our end or their end. We can hear you. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. I'm not sure why it's not working. It could be a little loud. Sorry? It could be a little loud. Harder to hear over here. Uh, I need to speak louder for you. Okay. Um. Are you, are you online? Everything's good at your end. I can't hear my translator anymore. Can, Can you hear you? your translator? Who's your translator? Ah. Hello, am I back? Okay, sorry about that. So, it's a pretty conventional sermon. And I want to now switch to Christ object lessons. So, as we go through chapter five, if you were 
you should all be familiar with this to some degree, I hope. I want us to, I know it's difficult if you haven't read uh, Jones's sermon. But I, I, if you had read it, you'd be able to compare chapter five from Christ Object Lessons. With the sermon by Jones. and the classes that we recently did in Slovakia. All these, all these ideas or concepts all come together. So my attention got brought to chapter five So I was invited to a family worship with some friends and that happened to be the study that they were doing that day. And when we read uh, the chapter, it's a pretty short chapter. There were certain thoughts that caught my attention. that seemed to be in alignment with Jonesy's sermon and the studies that we've, that I've been doing in the last several months. So I think you're all familiar that I have been speaking for some time now And asking the question, I've asked it various ways. What is a radical feminist? Or what is radical feminism? To be honest, I haven't had much feedback from people. Or much pushback. So. I began discussing this subject in Fiji around April time. But those meetings were not uh, recorded. So I repeated the study in a shorter form at a later camp meeting. I can't remember where that was. Does anybody remember what? I spoke about with respect to radical feminism or what a radical feminist is. We talked about uh, reading more, reading more on the subject. I spoke about reading more on the subject that we should read more books. I certainly did that. Okay, that's all Francisco can remember. Anyone else? Can you hear me at the back? I'll try and raise my voice. Manuel. Remember you uh, compare in contrast with radical feminism with liberal feminism back in Brazil. So I compared and contrast Radical feminism with, you said, liberal feminism? Yes. Yeah. 
Anyone else? Christy? I just remember you asking the class what they thought about it was. And so I just remember their answers. Okay, so I asked a class, I've asked various classes what these terms mean to them. So I know some people in the movement don't agree with what I've stated or what I'm about to state. So when I describe how I see things and you disagree, or agree, whichever, I'm going to go back to Christ Object Lessons, Chapter 5. For those who disagree with me, as my apology and defense, So, let me summarize. I've been asking about what these, these words mean, radical feminism, for a long time. Around April, May time, I began to discuss it publicly, what I, how I viewed it. People have disagreed with my perspective. And all of that was done before I came across the Christ object lesson passage. Which is why I want to discuss that chapter. Then we'd have any questions of where we're going. So um, Nova responded for those online. What I have done in previous presentations is to take these two words, radical feminist, and split the term. I've asked what does the word radical mean and what does the word feminist mean? And the reason why people have disagreed with me, at least one of the reasons, is because they say that I'm using these terms in a slightly different way than people in the world use, them, use those terms. My understanding is different to other experts on this subject, if I can put it that way. Okay, what does the word radical mean? Alyssa? Get into the root. Let me know your name, sorry. Sarah. Extreme. So the way it's used in modern language is to give this con connotation of being extreme or being on the fringe. Fringe, on the edge of society.
And so that's what Sarah said. And Alyssa said, root. So does anybody else have any thoughts? Um, we'll just go to Sarah for the moment. So Sarah's added to her view, her, ex her explanation. Someone who comments. Someone who gives a commentation on society, did you say? Reform. On social reforms. So someone who speaks about social reform. Eva? Okay, so I'll put rebel. So all of those explanations are correct. What I would like someone to do, if we take one, two, three, four, I'm going to say that one, two, and four are the same. They give the same idea or concept. So I would like someone to explain them in reference to number three. So the definition of the word is number three. It's not one, two, or four. But that's how the word is either understood or used very often today. So I'd like someone to connect those ideas. How do we get from root to an extreme rebel who wants social reforms? Who wants to have a go? I have an idea. One moment. Who was that? Manjo? Yes. Uh, it's like, like I'm going to give an example. In construction, we have to destroy first and then we're going to build. So Manuel has said he's going to give an example. In order to build, you have to destroy first. Is it? Yes, in, in order for us to have a social reform on the issue of feminism, for example, uh, we need to attack the root, which is patriarchy. Okay, so uh, Manuel said if we want to um, have some kind of change, we have to attack the root, which is patriarchy. I can see your hand. I can see your hand. That is correct. But I, but I want us to be careful to handle the rules carefully. Because when we speak about root in this context, 
it's not so much about uprooting patriarchy. So I want us to come to a more principled uh, explanation of how we connect these concepts together, how they merge. So, so when you give your answer, I need an explanation how you get from root to extreme. How you get from the word root to rebellious. Are you going to do that for us, Kathy? I see it as the root is the plant. And that what we see the fruit of that particular plant is rebellion, extremism, social reform. So Kathy has said that the root can be symbolized as a plant. And the extremism or rebellion or social reform is the fruit of the plant. Francisco? Talking, are we talking social change? Societal change? I'm not going to translate this bit. I think that's what the person meant, yes. Okay, so, so this will be the last question, then I'll give my thoughts. Christine? So is it not working because the root, which is patriarchy, is not the same as the people that are being extreme and rebels because they're the ones against patriarchy? So Christine has said that the root is patriarchy and... And the rebels are the ones that are fighting against it. So they're in conflict. So the way I understand uh, these terms, it says, it doesn't actually say it literally, but a radical feminist. So the radical is, we'll, we'll just say it's the woman. She is radical. We agree with that? That's how when we say, are we radical feminists? We're talking about ourselves. So the woman has become radical. So is she positive or negative? So she's positive. So if you just wind back your thoughts, we have to be careful about making root into something negative when it's actually something that's positive or someone that is positive. Victoria? Oh. Okay. So this person, we'll say it's a woman, has become radicalized. And the problem with the word radical 
is that it's been hijacked. Like that other word that's been hijacked. Which is what? Can we guess? Woke. The term woke has been hijacked. I won't go into the explanation of that. If you're not familiar with it, ask somebody who is. This positive person who has now become radical, what have they done? What are they doing? Radical means root. So your name? Your name? Lily. So this person is going to see that there is a problem. And they're going to try to understand what the problem is. And in order for them to do it that successfully, what did Lily say they have to do? Eva? Oh, sorry, um, Victoria? They have to go to the root of the problem. So the root is something that's positive. It, it's dealing with something that is negative, of course. So when they begin to look at the root of the problem, then what happens? Alyssa says that they're attacked. So they're attacked because of the way they view what's happening around them. They stop following the norms of society or the normal view of seeing things. And because they want some kind of change, and what kind of change do they want? What kind of change does this woman want? Someone? Who's speaking? Christy? Christy said this person wants rights for everybody. So what they want is a fundamental change. They don't want some adjustment. They don't want, uh, if we know the word tweak, they don't want some minor change. They want the whole system thought through again from the beginning. And in order to in order to do that, it demands some significant changes. Do men want that change? Most don't. Do women want that change? Same answer. Some do, but most don't. And so the people who hold these views that there needs to be 
that society needs to be reordered They're considered to be extremists because they don't fit within the norms of society. So hopefully we've, we've explained how we get from the word root to the word extreme. And number two, social reform is just an example of this. It's not a definition. So that's the word radical. And what does feminism mean? If you're a feminist. Person who believes that women should have the same rights. Jim, could you repeat that? Person that believes that women should have the same rights as men. So a feminist is someone who believes that a woman should have the same rights as men. Do we all agree with that? So if we agree with that, Victor, why do we use the word feminine, which means woman? If it's about equality. If you don't understand the question, I can repeat it. You not you you don't you don't you're not sure, Gloria. Why right? are you just asking me? I didn't have my hand. I know you didn't. <laughs> my question is, Jim said, feminist or feminism means. Women are equal to men or have the same rights? Women have the same rights as men. So why did they use the word, why, why is that term a gendered term? Why not say radical equalist or radical equalist? Go ahead. In a society where women are undervalued, they don't have the same rights or are not viewed with the same rights. So Gloria said the term is used because women in the society in which we live don't have the same rights as men. Sarah? It's a movement to empower women. Yeah. It's a, she said a movement to empower women. Anybody else? Okay, so we all know what this means. I think. BLM. So what does BLM mean? So several people have said Black Lives Matter. But it actually means Black Lives Matter as well. as white lives. Is 
That's what it means, isn't it? That's what you're going to say, Christy? So we all here agree that that's what BLN means. And the problem is in the title. Because what is it? What's the key word that's used there? Black. Which is not an inclusive term. It doesn't say all lives matter. Human lives matter. It says black lives matter. And that's the same reason why this uh, word that we have here, feminist, is a gendered term. Because it's a statement, not just that women are undervalued, that women inherently have the same rights that are afforded to men. And just like uh, in the second statement about Black Lives Matter, what's that statement making when it comes to Black Lives? Uh, Chrissy said that they're not treated equally. Sarah? Black? So we're on Black Lives Matter. So you're saying Black Lives... I'm on Black Lives Matter. You don't, you don't know now. This Black Lives Matter concept why is it framed in this way? Because it's making a statement. I'll reframe my question. If we were to divide the world into two, half the world have been cancelled, haven't they, in that statement? Who's been cancelled out of that? Who's been cancelled out of that statement? Eva? All the white people, everyone that's not black. They're just not part of that statement. And the question is why? Why have they been excluded? This thing? I asked the same question a couple of ways because sometimes people don't get it the first time. You go to whichever one version of question you like, but they're the same question. The question, um, why is it framed that way? Sorry. Okay. Oh, no. So, but um, my answer is like, why is it? Go ahead now, sorry. Why is it framed as Black Lives Matter? And it's because not only are they not treated equally, they're treated worse because like they're always being um, arrested and- I'm gonna stop you. Your, your answer was because they're not treated fairly. So my understanding is that either everybody knows or there's an unwritten code that the life of a white person matters. 
period. Whether white people are willing to admit that or not is irrelevant. To the framers of um, this, this title. They say it's a fact that the life of a white person matters. And because their lives already matter, everything in society is framed around their needs. It's, it would become redundant, bordering on a tautology, to say that everybody's lives matter. Because everybody would mean white people, or include white people, And their lives already matter anyway, so there's no point in saying it. So if we take that concept of feminism, or the word feminine, it uses a gender term Because everybody knows that men's lives already matter. It's not that they matter more and women's lives matter less. It's a statement to say, we already know their lives matter. And this statement, or this ideology, says that women's lives matter. So, if we're in agreement with what the term radical feminist is, we can see that both men and women can be feminists, because everybody can stand up and say, Black Lives Matter. You don't have to be black to make that statement. So if we understand what a feminist is, we all understand that you get different types of feminists. And this movement has gravitated to this um, type of feminist that is called radical, that goes to the roots. Does anybody want to make a comment or have a question. Gloria. Uh, to go through the example that you gave in your past presentation of comparing liberal and radical feminists in April about the lion and the rabbit. So um, Gloria's asked me to go back to a previous presentation. to compare two types of feminists, which I think is important to do. I can't remember the example that you're referring to. So the rabbit is more radical feminist if they eat the plant. Okay, I think I understand briefly. Um, Manuel. 
think that I was thinking about service ontology then when we say gender equality we are that has a parallel to all lives matter right because uh, we are in what, what, I, I need to translate or repeat what you've said oh. what's your thought you, you're saying well, when we say gender equality is that is that a tautology? So the question is: Is the term gender equality a tautology? Sam, are you saying no? Or is no your brother? I don't know your name. Sorry, Zach. I think Zach said you said no. Or were you just shaking your head? Okay, so I don't think it's all tautology, no. Nope, I don't think it is. So, other? I was thinking of something when you were talking about what you just said about uh, comparing feminists with uh, radical feminism with. Black Lives Matter, and I was thinking that um, people aren't just black or white, they're on a continuum. So Sue Ellen has said, when we talk about Black Lives Matters compared to feminism, everybody's on a spectrum. concept to feminism, we can also see that gender, we have learned that gender is also on a spectrum. And so we know that gender is also on a spectrum. And what point would you like to make about that? Or is that the point? Well, the po I guess the point is that um, gender um, equality includes, you know, LGBTQ. So she's making the point that it's not just about women, it includes uh, people who are LGBTQ. I think we'd all agree with that. So we've spoken about radical. And we just want to have a quick look at liberal. So what's a liberal feminist? I've spoken about it before. Some people here have mentioned it. What does a radical feminist want? We already answered it. Well, I think, you know, a radical feminist wants to um, go to the root and actually... Let's just try to use the phrases that we have here. De you know, deconstruct the patriarchy. Deconstruct the patriarchy. Destroy... Okay. So, Sarah? Fundamental change? Coming at the back? I'm going to say radical feminists want number two. In a, just simplistically, they want social reform. I'm not discussing the degree or the mechanism for that reform. Pardon? Am I understanding? was that liberal feminism, they want to um, work within the system as it is now. So I'm not going to translate that because I just want to get there in a, in a second, because I want to ask one question first.
I'm going to put number two, which is social reform. That's what the radicals want. Does anybody disagree with that? We shouldn't do. I think we're on the same page. We haven't defined what liberal is. But tell me what you think liberal feminists want. Isabel? What they don't want, they don't want to disrupt, they want to use the infrastructure. What do they want? Work with the system. That's it. So you said that they want to work with the system. I don't think they want to work with the system. They may do that, but what is it they, they actually want? Alyssa? Same thing, equality. They want exactly the same thing. Number two, which is social reform. So my understanding is both types of feminist want exactly the same thing. So I think liberal wants to like modify social structure, but radical wants to like replace it. So I'm going to repeat what Sarah said in a moment. Just want to make sure that we all are okay with those definitions or the goals. So if we agree with that, then we would want to ask a couple of questions. How? And the degree. Would we ask why? So tell me, there's three questions I've put here that we should ask ourselves or perhaps ask ourselves. What we're doing now is comparing and contrasting these two views. Is how a legitimate question? Put your hands up. Put your hands up if it's not. Okay, we agreed that it's a good question. The degree of social reform. Good question. Third one, why? Good question. Okay. Only one or two people said yes. And the answer is no. Why no, Gloria? Because what we're doing is comparing the two. And if they both want the same thing, Why won't do anything for us? Were you going to say anything different, Victoria, or pretty much that? Good. So Victoria was going to say the same. I want us to be clear why this is a bad 
um, road to go down, the why. Because it won't yield any fruit if we go down that path. So we'll go to the two questions, how and the degree. And Sarah has said that when you look at the liberals, tell me if this is okay, work within the system. Is that what you said? We're not asking what they want. You said that this should be modify the system. That was what you've just said. But I thought the word reform means modify. Reform. Change the form. And the prefix re means to modify the form. So that's not the how. That's actually what they want or what they're going to do. So how do they modify society is the question. And I thought you had said that the way they do it is that they work within the system. But I'd misunderstood. Victoria. I still want to make sure that we all understand what liberals want and how they go about doing it. Are we okay with that reasonable definition? I think it's reasonable. They work within the system. Which means their goal is not to destroy or break the system. They may say, I would use the word pretend, that their end goal is to break the system. Or as John Bunyan said, it's like a fading mirage. Fading means it doesn't matter. It doesn't translate well. It's okay. okay. The degree. How much change, how much social reform is there going to be? You're liberal. We'll go to Manuel. Partial. Partial. Victoria? Not much? Francisco? Subject to compromise. So there's going to be a compromise. Anything else? Good. Okay, so I'm going to use the word limited. Hopefully that encompasses all your thoughts. And I'm going to add the word incremental. Step, stepwise change. Okay, so if that's what liberals do and how they operate,
Go, Victoria. So Victoria says the radicals work against the system. Anybody else? Silly? Okay, so um, we're brainstorming here. So someone said against. And someone said outside. That was Victoria and Lily. Sir? Are you going to say the same? Which one were you going to say? Outside. Zach? I didn't hear that very well. Underneath. Undermine. I'm going to say undermine means, I'll put it down, undermine means against, I think. Anyone else? Okay, so we've got this, all of these are synonyms. I want us to give not synonym, something a different concept if you've got a different um, thought or idea. But synonyms are all going to be saying the same. Oh. Sorry? Yes, this is how. How they go about social reform. So we've got they fight against the system, undermine the system, destroy the system, or they work outside of the system. Um, sorry, we'll go to Sam and then uh, David. So they want a new system. But that's, we're back here to the reform. So we know they want to reform the system or have a new one. And the question we're asking is, how do they go about doing that? And people have basically said uh, they destroy it or they work outside it. David. Just like it's too much of a I would say we create a new one. So David said they're going to create a new one, which is Almost the same as destroy the old one. Or it is. So, Ellen? Well, I was going to say replace, but that sounds a little bit like recreate. Yes. So, replace would just end up being a synonym. Chrissy? Is your question based on what they have been doing or what they want to do sometime in the future? My, um, so Chrissy's question was, am I talking about what they've done in the past up to this point or what they want to do in the future? So I thought you were a radical feminist. So when you say them, you mean you? I like it sitting around today. <laughs> there are famous people all across the world. But most people are nobodies. But they, if they claim the title, they should all be doing the same thing.
within a sphere of influence. So it's still, we could still answer the question how they would go about doing this. Go ahead, Chrissy. Well, that's, we're just trying to change the mindsets of the people around us. So, so Christine says we're going to change the mindset. Eva? Yeah, So asking for human rights is social reform. That's what you want. So you said, so if I said how, you said ask for it. So do you think radical feminists would just ask for something? Okay, so I'm running out of time. So uh, I'll go to Victoria. Start again. But I'm still thinking about against and outside of how come it's against or outside instead of against and outside. Like what's making the against different from the outside? So I'm not going to translate what um, Victoria asked, but these are all, all the words that I've got here on the board. Are all words are all words that people have given me. We haven't brought them together to try to get a picture of what it really of what the how really is. Elaine. Uproot means destroy. Sarah, I'd like a, a general concept that's different to what we've got on the board. Zach, trip the system. I'm going to, I can find trip somewhere here. We're all doing synonyms. Live it in our own lives. Live it in our own lives. So, if I change my life, that's going to go to the root of what's wrong in society. Do you think? <laughs> so, if you change your life, Sue Ellen, and everyone else is ignoring you, which they are, how's it? How's any change happened? You do or you don't. So does that mean when you speak, people change? Exactly, but I mean, it's not instantaneously, but... So they're not changing or they are? They may not change instantly. Okay. It's like spreading the gospel. So Sue so Ellen says it's like spreading the gospel... 
if she changes her mindset, other people will as well. So I think she said personal influence. Yeah. Everybody on that side done? No synonyms anymore. We've got create there already. Oh. Um, oops. Sorry. Zach, you had something to say? Um, oh, the reason is because it's frozen. No, it's, I don't know why it's frozen. It's, it's, on Zoom, it's not frozen. Uh, we have, we, the, for the translators, I haven't said anything yet. It's just we've got some technical problems here. So I'm sorry about that. We've got the word create. Anyone else before we close? Zach? Agitate. Educate. So you want to educate people. I think that's the same as personal influence. Anyone else? So, on, on the word how, first you, first you voice your, your needs or wants or things like that. And if that doesn't um, come to pass, then you go with whatever's been done in the past from people that have been marginalized and protests or, or so first you ask and if you don't get what you want you you protest do you agree that protesting is fighting against the system and what degree? Sorry? Depends to what degree. Whatever the degrees, it's going against the system. So we already have against. It ends up protesting becomes a synonym of against. Okay, so I'm going to stop here because I think we've pretty much exhausted all the ideas that you could think of. So I want to summarize some thoughts. And I apologize that it's not... Um, Scrolling on our TV, we'll have to work that out. So I'm going to summarize. Work outside the system. Work against the system. Seek to destroy the system. Maybe use your personal influence um, to educate people about the system. Should be the same as changing people's mindsets. So, if that's a summary of how, as we close now, think to yourselves are these the definitions that you would use to define the word radical? Did any of these things get to the root of the problem? Okay, let's close with prayer. 
for those enjoy, who are joining online, I'll be presenting the game tomorrow at the same time. Holy God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Each of us, individually and collectively, seek for a clearer understanding of what it is you expect of us what you're asking us to do as we go through this camp meeting. May you continue to reveal your will for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe we're Coming back together in about 15 minutes. I want to thank everybody.